Hi, Cal Johnson here with Video 101 TV. One of the features of Premiere Pro 2.0 that has been greatly expanded from previous versions is the Title Tool. From your menu, left-hand mouse click on File, then select New, Title. You can also click on the New Item button at the bottom of your project panel and then select Title or use the keyboard shortcut by hitting F9 on your keyboard. The New Title dialog box opens up, prompting you to name your new title. Use the default name or type in a new one and then hit Enter. The Title tool opens up. Now the first thing I want to make clear is that the entire new window that you see is considered the Title tool. So in the Adobe Premiere help files, if you see a reference to the Title tool, it's this whole window that they're talking about. Now before I go on about how great the title tool is, I just want to point out its main limitation. All of these properties that you see here on the right hand side are static. In other words, you can't animate them. Those kinds of capabilities are left to Premiere's Motion Graphics Big Brother After Effects, which is a fantastic piece of software that truly opens up the world of compositing and animation. However, in the meantime, Premiere's title tool can be very handy for creating some great looking titles and for some projects will be all that you'll need to get the job done. Okay, so rather than go through each of the functions of the title tool, let's hop around a little bit at first so that we can learn how to create a title and then look at some of the more advanced features later on. In the title toolbar panel, I want you to familiarize yourself with the select tool and the type tool because you'll be using these a lot. Go ahead and select the Type tool by left-hand mouse clicking on it in the Title Toolbar panel. This middle panel is called the Title Designer. With the Type tool still selected, click in the Title Designer work area and type some text. Don't worry about size, style, or placement. When you're finished, left-hand mouse click on the Select tool back in the Title Toolbar panel. Your title now has a bounding box around it with handles. The bounding box handles allow you to resize and reshape your text. Place your cursor over top of a handle and then left hand mouse click and hold down the left hand mouse button while you drag to reshape the text. These handles allow you to stretch the text vertically while these allow you to stretch it horizontally. The corner handles allow you to stretch and resize the text in both dimensions at once. Holding down the shift key while you do this will scale the text uniformly larger or smaller. You can reposition your text by left hand mouse clicking on it and dragging it wherever you want. Now all of these adjustments can also be made by entering numerical values in the title properties panel under the transform settings. In addition you can set the opacity of your title anywhere from 100 to 0%. In other words from fully opaque to fully transparent and anywhere in between. You can also rotate your text by typing in numerical values or using the rotation tool. Below the title designer panel is the styles panel. These pre-made styles allow you to quickly change the style of any text. With your text selected, click on a style and the text will immediately update to the new style. A pre-made style might be just what you're looking for, but they can also be used just as a starting point as every aspect of the style including font, size, color, and more can be changed. If you haven't done so already, click the Show Video button to display the frame that your current time indicator is currently placed on in your timeline. This way you can see how well your title is going to work with your video. In the Title Properties panel, expand the options for Properties, Fill, Strokes, and Shadow by clicking their twirly keys. You can now see all the different options that make up your current style. Under Properties, you can set the font from the drop-down menu. The font can also be changed in the Title Designer panel by using the drop-down menu. Or, you can use the font browser which allows you to preview fonts in the current style. If you decide you don't want to change the font after all, just hit cancel or in the case of using the drop down menu, just click somewhere other than on one of the fonts. Hitting Ctrl Z will also undo any font change. 
If available for the current font, the options for bold, italic, or underlined are just a click away. You can also use the drop down menu which previews the font options. Next is the font size. Aspect changes the thickness of the letters. Notice the spaces in between remain relatively unchanged. Letting changes the space between lines, so changing this setting will only affect text with more than one line. Notice how I'm shuttling all of these values by left hand mouse clicking, holding the left hand mouse button down, and then moving the cursor side to side. It's just a lot easier to get an idea of what value I want this way rather than typing in random numbers. Kerning affects the space between pairs of letters. Just click your cursor between the letters you wish to adjust and then set the kerning to the desired value. This way you can adjust the spacing between a couple of characters without affecting the spacing between any of the others. Tracking changes the overall spacing. Now I know you're probably sitting there playing with the tracking thinking, hey, how do I animate this? It's really cool. But like I said at the start of this tutorial, you can't animate these properties. That's what After Effects is for. I know, I know, that's just the way it is. Now hang your head and say do and let's move on. Baseline Shift allows you to simply move the text above or below the baseline. Slant adds a forward or backward slant to the text depending on whether you set positive or negative values. The small caps feature is pretty cool. I'll just change the font to something that demonstrates it better. Click the checkbox to turn on small caps and then adjust the small cap size. Underline, pretty obvious, creates an underline for the selected text. Keep in mind that just like a word processor, you can select just a portion of text by clicking in the text box with the text tool and dragging to highlight the text. Now you can make changes to that portion of the text only. Distortion has two parameters, X and Y, and can be used to customize the text shape. Now we've covered a lot so far in this tutorial and you're probably ready to play around with the title tool and come up with some new titles, so let's wrap things up. Under the fill properties, there is a color swatch. Click it to open up the color picker dialog box and select a new color. To add a shadow to your text, click the checkbox beside the shadow property. Use the color picker to select the shadow color. You can also set the opacity, angle, the distance, size, and spread. When you're happy with your text, simply close the title tool and your title will be saved. In your project panel, find your title and then drag and drop it onto your timeline. The duration of your title will depend on your still image default setting in your preferences, but you can extend your title to any length you wish. Just hover your cursor at the end of your title clip until it changes into the trim tool, then left hand mouse click and drag while holding the left hand mouse button down. In part two, we'll look at the rest of the titler tools, how to add shapes, and customize those shapes and text using the fill and stroke options. Until then, I'm Cal Johnson and don't forget to check out our website, video101.tv, for more great tips and tutorials.